This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Freesound.org is a very nice portal for getting free sounds. Uh, it's uh, under the attribution license, non commercial, some of them Creative Commons. And um, you can search for, for example, Boom. And then you get lots of booms here, these ones and um, uh, one of my favorites uh, in the f uh, in the first page, I think, is that one, the big boom, because it's really massive. It has a very low frequency, and uh, this is uh, the one I'm going to use. Um, big boom was uh, programmed or recorded by Jobro in uh, 2007. It had 31,000 downloads and uh, lots of comments here. And uh, I used another piece of sound, which is this one here, Plastic Impact. And um, I mixed them both together. This was done by Smuth and, uh, in 2015. The file formats are WAF and 16-bit, uh, 44 uh, kilohertz. And um, both of them actually, and you can actually import both of them into Maya, or you can mix them in an audio audio um, mixing uh, application. That's what I did. Uh, so I got that boom release, and I'm gonna. It's in, in my sound folder in the current project, and uh, I just drag it into the time slider, and it appears here. As you can see. Uh, it doesn't start right away. It starts after about 40 or 50 sec uh, frames, which is two seconds. Uh, I wanted the boom to start later, so we have a little bit time to uh, see the scene or whatever. Uh, right mouse click, sound and boom release, and then you go to the option box, and here you see the offset. You can offset it further to the left or to the right. So, for example, if we offset it minus 10, it moves just 10 frames to the left, which is just fine. We can leave it there. And uh, when we play back the sound, if you don't hear anything, you need to go to the playback speed and set it to real time. Because if it's set to play every frame or play every frame maximum is real time, which is what we use in most cases really, uh, it doesn't play back. It when sound is fixed to real time. Um, we can hear it already. And um, one thing you might consider here, this is the Autodesk help page. You see Maya supports the following audio file formats. It's a little bit tricky, really, and this doesn't tell the whole truth. i tell you in a second. Linux, uh, Microsoft and Apple use, um, all of them use WAF and AIFF and BWAF, but only the Mac system uses MP3 as well. But if you have a WAF file with 32-bit uh, uh, coding, uh, it's not recognized by Maya, so it's a little bit, you know, you have to take care about the 16-bit, the classical uh, file format here. Now let's create a very simple geometry, which will then animate according to the sound. Uh, I start with polygon modeling and the soccer ball, and I scale it up quite a bit, like this, and I delete the front faces, that's the right mouse click, and delete them so we can look inside, uh, which is not necessary, but um, maybe whatever. So I'll flatten it a little bit, and I go to the side window here, and right mouse click vertices, pick all of them, and scale them to zero so they're totally flat, so this thing sits on a flat surface, and I can move this a little bit inside and make this a little bit more interesting. Move it up. So that's the object we have. Not really exciting, but uh, okay. We move it up just a little bit so it's over the horizon. 
and we introduce a plane where it sits on which is right here. We don't need to see the grid. That's why we click here. Okay, so that's basically the starting point. Maybe a shader. Now let's animate these things here. We can go to the beginning of the um, of the boom. Let's go uh, one frame further back or two and select that object keyframe it. We don't press S, we press Shift W. W is the translation key as you might remember and uh, with the Shift key and W uh, all together you keyframe only the translation. And now let's uh, switch on this icon here which is called auto frame. So when we change anything with a translation it will uh, record the keyframes automatically. So right here we have the impact and then we want it to shoot up like this. You see the keyframe is already there. Let's have a look how this goes. So it doesn't uh, work very well because it starts too early. We grab this keyframe here with the middle mouse button and move it just f two frames further to the boom and Shift W set another keyframe. So these two are basically the same now. We postponed the keyframe just two frames further. That's better, you see. But um, the boom is still uh, lingering in the air and our object doesn't move any further. Now let's uh, keyframe everything with a key S. So everything is keyframed here. And um, a little bit later we can lift it up and rotate it just a little bit like this. So how does this work now? This is not the way an object moves up. It rotates slowly and uh, the whole lift-off process starts differently and that's why I can only recommend you to use dynamics here and uh, you see the you can do it in with keyframes but you have to think a lot and modify a lot whereas dynamics just present you that for basically for free so what I'll do now I go to the very beginning of our animation and I go to edit and delete all by type channels it's an odd expression for keyframes. We're deleting all keyframes. So they're all gone now. Our little red house sits on the ground and stays there. Now we want to make it dynamic. And um, for that purpose we go to the special effects and we create a field. And we want it to move up. That's why we create gravity. And uh, gravity, of course, drags the object down but uh, we just change the magnitude here from 9.8 plus to minus 9.8 for example so let's try it out of course it lifts off too early so what how do we go about this well we go to our keyframe 23 in my case and we set the magnitude of the field to zero. We don't want any force to be active at that time. But two frames later, when the boom is already uh, massive, we can type in minus 10 now and set another keyframe. So within these two frames, the magnitude of the gravity field shoots up from zero to 10. How does this work? much better I think. I think um, for that big boom we need a little bit more power here so let's type in 30 for example. Set the keyframe. When you set keyframes be sure that you're at the proper position here in the timeline. Well, that's good and now we need to get it back 
And how do we do this? Well, let's go here for example, 65 in my case, and change the magnitude back to say 10. So it drags our object back down. Maybe that's not enough, but we'll see about it. The sound here is meant to be landing again, so we need our object to return to the surface much earlier. So let's go to the previous keyframe, that one, 65 in my case, and raise the magnitude so we can move our object back to the ground with more force. You see, we're already almost there. Uh, maybe 25 here. I think the keyframe is set already with the auto keyframe on. This is just a trial and error thing. Very good. Now we want this object to collide with the surface when it comes back. How do we do this? Very easy. Um, we just pick the ground plane, go to Fields and Solvers, and we make this a passive rigid body. It's passive because it doesn't deal with gravity or anything, a force field, but it feels hard for the rest of the scene. That's why it's, turn, it's turning yellow now. You see, um, now we're returning almost at the uh, right time and we're bouncing just two times. We would like to have another bouncing sound here, but we don't have it. That's why we need to rest our object now. And uh, I show you how you can do this. You grab the object here in the outliner, it's called platonic object here in our case. And uh, here you have the platonic one, the platonic shape one, the rigid body, that's what's interesting for us. We have a mass of one currently. When we raise the mass, the whole animation will change dramatically and we don't want it to change dramatically, we just want a change right here. So what we can do, for example, the bounciness currently set to 6, 0 0.6. If we reduce this to 0 0.2, much better. And we can have a damping which we animate right here. Let's set a keyframe here for damping. And so damping is 0 here. But once the impact is there, right here, we want a damping which is quite drastic. Let's raise the damping factor here to 10. I think that's fine. If you go to the graph editor now, it's under animation editors, graph editor, you see basically only one keyframe, that's for the rigid body, that's the animation we just did with our damping. But nothing else really, because we're in a dynamic simulation. Um, what you can do with uh, dynamic uh, simulations is bake the simulation. So you pick that object and we go to animation, because everything which has to do with keyframes is under animation, and as I said, key, and here we can bake our simulation. Let's bake it. Lots of keyframes, as I said, all over the place here. Now we can delete certain things, because we don't need the dynamic simulation anymore. We delete the gravity field. We go to Edit, Delete All by Type, and we delete not channels, that would be the keyframes which we just created, but all the rigid bodies right here. So we have basically nothing but 
lots of keyframes here. And when we open the graph editor now under Windows Animation Editors Graph Editor, we get a lot of interesting things. That's basically the bounds here. You currently have a keyframe every frame. If you go to Curves and Key Reduce Filter, use that option here, or the Euler Filter, or the Butterworth Filter, I made a tutorial about uh, this uh, a while ago, uh, you get uh, an interesting development of our curve. So let's try the Key Reduce Filter. I haven't tried it here. It doesn't do anything. I think I need to select everything. And I go to Curves and Key Reduce Filter. Yeah, it did a lot of things really. And you see, it did a good job down here at that bounce. I could modify it and uh, lower it, for example, but basically it kept that peak here. And uh, whereas here it saw, the reducer filter saw that we don't need many keyframes. There's a smooth line here until the next bump. And that, that's a very soft, smooth bump. Anyway, we don't hear it in the sound, by the way, that one. Uh, so uh, we could lower this or erase that if we wanted to, to. But you see, the graph editor is still quite complicated and we have lots of keyframes here. But now we go to the time editor. With this object selected, go to Windows, Animation Editor, and just below the graph editor is the time editor. And the time editor wants us to import content from external files or add the selected content from the scene and that's what we're going to do. So we have our animation clip right here and it's still the same animation as before but now we can actually let me dock this somewhere. The problematic point is right here. The boom is okay. That's when it lifts off. Much slower, by the way, at the very beginning than with our keyframe attempt at the very beginning of this tutorial. And then it comes down and here we have that peak, that noise from the touchdown, but it hasn't touched down yet. It needs a couple of more frames. Now it's touching down. So we're basically well, five frames behind, and that's the eye sees that, and the ear hears that, all right. So what we're going to do, we um, shorten this section from the top part here, where it starts going down again, right here. So we cut our clip into two pieces, and the cutting is right here. So we have two clips now. Now we go to the touchdown of our animation, which is after the sound, which is right here. So we select it again and cut it here. So that's the part which we're going to shorten just slightly. And the shortening icon is this one here. It's uh, under retime, basically. You can retime it, uh, but ju just use this icon here. Uh, the scale mode change playback speed of the clip and um, that's what we're going to do. Let's do this in a drastic way so you see what uh, what the point of this is. It's much too early now so it's just very subtle really. Maybe like this. I think this is quite okay. Now we move this back. We can overlap it is not necessary in this case. Let's have a look, a closer look now, and then I render the animation together with the sound. So what we take away from this is that dynamic simulation is excellent for these things. You can tweak the dynamic simulation so that you get your animation in the proper, pro properly linked to the sound but not necessarily perfect and then you can accelerate and decelerate things in in an excellent way in the time editor and with this i leave you alone now have fun with making sound and animation all together bye bye